transition to a matchup in South Beach on Sunday afternoon. It's Christmas football in Miami. It's the 6-8 and eight Green Bay Packers traveling to take on the 8-6 and six Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins are favored by four points in this game. It's a 1 o'clock kickoff on Christmas. The over-under for this matchup is 49 points. So when I look at this matchup, let's start off with the Green Bay Packers. The Packers, winners of two straight. They beat the Bears a few weeks ago in week 13, 28 to 19. Bears are not a good football team. So as a Packers fan, I wasn't impressed with that win. The Packers did what they were supposed to do, beating the Chicago Bears. Go to the bye week, week 14, and then they had the Rams on Monday. The Packers beat the Rams 24 to 12. But I thought the Packers should have blew out the Rams because we get into that time of year where teams are typically who they are at this time of the year. Like, there's no surprises anymore. You are who your record says you are. And I felt like watching that game, the Packers only beating the Rams 24-12 was kind of indicative of how the Packers season has went so far this year because the Rams, they threw in the towel. They threw in the towel this year. Matthew Stafford is out. Cooper Cup is out. Aaron Donald is out. Packers, they're fighting for their playoff lives. I would have liked to see the Packers beat the Rams by at least 17 or three touchdowns. 17 or 21 points, I would have been okay with that as a fan. But they only won by 12 points. Now, they could have scored at the end of the game and won 31 to 12, but they took a knee on three straight plays, and they just, they just milked the clock, and the game was over. But, you know, in that game, I thought offensively they were balanced. You look at what they were able to do on the offensive side of the ball. They had 138 rushing yards. They had 207 passing yards. So I like that rushing attack with A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. And this is something that we've been talking about all year long with the Packers and how they are going to have to win football games with the young receivers that they have. You can't rely on Aaron Rodgers to drop back the pass 40 times in football games and expect to win. You're going to need to ride the legs of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. That's what, that's what the recipe for success for this Packers football team needs to be. For the season, the Packers have 127 rushing yards per game. That's ranked 12th in the NFL. That's their recipe for success. But I will admit, the Packers offensively over the last two weeks, albeit against the Bears and the Rams, I like what I've seen from the Packers overall in the last two weeks from an offensive standpoint. And the Dolphins, they don't have a great defense like the 49ers or like the Eagles. Their defense is, is average at best. At best, they're average. But you look at Christian Watson for the season, he got 29 receptions. 447 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. I like what I've seen from Christian Watson over the last few weeks. I really, really do. He would have had his fifth touchdown in five games straight had he been able to catch a touchdown pass against the Rams. He had a chance to get into the end zone, but Troy Hill had a great tackle on Watson in the open field in that game. But I like what I've seen from Watson. I really, really do. Romeo Dobbs for the season. 36 receptions, 369 receiving yards, three touchdowns. So I like the development of Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. I really, really do. And this is why I believe Aaron Rodgers is going to return back for his 18th season. Seeing the emergence of a Christian Watson, a Romeo Dobbs, it has to be exciting for Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback. He got to be excited. And honestly, statistically, the Packers have played better in their last five games compared to what they did in their first nine games. Their first nine games, the Packers went three and six. Their last five games, they went three and two. 
points per game in their first nine games. They averaged 17 points per game. In their last five games, they've averaged 27 points per game. In their first nine games, they had three rushing touchdowns. In their last five games, they had six rushing touchdowns. Their turnover margin in the first nine games, they were minus five in turnover margin. Last five games, plus two. And, they, and they've had also four rushing touchdowns over the last two games. So it, it's starting to come, it's, it's starting to become a tundra turnaround for the Green Bay Packers. And again, I think when it comes to Aaron Rodgers and whether or not he's going to ret- play next year, considering the money that the Packers owe Aaron Rodgers and the development of Watson and Dobbs, you still got Aaron Jones in the backfield. You still got A.J. Dillon. You still got Matt LaFleur, who's led you to an NFC championship twice. You know, I think Aaron Rodgers will definitely return back to, for his 18th season. Not only that, I don't believe Aaron Rodgers wants to share that spotlight in the offseason, retiring the same year when Brady retires. I think Rodgers and Brady deserve to both go out on their own terms and have their own ceremony. So I think Aaron Rodgers will definitely return back for his 18th season for one more ride with the Packers. But I believe in this matchup against the Dolphins, the Packers are going to have to outscore the Dolphins. That's, that's what I believe is going to have to happen in this game. Defensively, I don't see the Packers being able to slow down Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. I mean, the way that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle have played this year, it has been nothing short of sensational. And I believe that they are the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. I love the trio with the Bengals, with Chase, with Boyd, with Higgins. But this duo with Hill and Waddle, it's the best in the NFL. Best in the NFL. Tyreek Hill for the season, 109 receptions, 1,529 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. It's a great chance that Tyreek Hill may have over 2,000 receiving yards this year. It's a possibility it could happen. That's how great Tyreek Hill has been this season. And he's a part of the reason why Tua has had the best season of his career. You can make an argument for Tyreek Hill being the NFL MVP if you look at the way Tua has played this year alone. But Jalen Waddle, 62 receptions, 1,117 receiving yards, seven touchdowns this year. I, they have been great this year for the Dolphins. So that's the one matchup that I'm looking forward to watching in this matchup. When the Dolphins have the football on the offense and the Packers are on defense, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle versus Jair Alexander and Rasul Douglas for the Packers. That's the matchup I'm looking forward to seeing. Are the Packers going to, you know, get physical with Hill and Waddle and try to disrupt the timing in that Dolphins offense? Because I believe if you can get pressure on Tua, I think that will help your defense be able to slow down this high-powered Dolphins offense. Offensively, the Dolphins... They average 385 total yards per game. That's ranked fourth in the NFL. They average 274 passing yards per game. That's ranked third in the NFL. They average 25 points per game. That's ranked ninth in the NFL. And this year has been the best year of Tua's career. This year, Tua, 24 touchdowns, five interceptions, 3,238. Passing yards, he's completed 65% of his passes. You got to give a lot of credit to Mike McDaniel and the development that he has done with Tua Tagovailoa. Remember last year under Brian Flores, there were times where Tua didn't even finish games. Ryan Fitzpatrick had to come in and finish games for the Dolphins last year because they didn't believe in Tua. Remember, they were in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, and they were also – trying to bring in Tom Brady with Sean Payton. So they were definitely, definitely interested in moving on from Tua. But I think the Packers, their, their, their one chance at being able to pull off the upset is going to be trying to, you know, put up some points offensively.
put up some points against this this Dolphins defense that hasn't been very good. I mean, you look at the Dolphins defensively this year, they are bottom half in a lot of major categories. They're ranked 24th in total yards given up per game. They give up 375 yards per game. They're, they give up 246 yards per game. That's ranked 27th in the NFL. So you can definitely throw the football on this Dolphins defense. They give up 25 points per game as a defense. That's tied for 26th in the NFL. So you can definitely score against this Dolphins defense. Now, on the other side again, Tua, it's interesting when you look at what he's done the last few weeks. In week 7 through 12, in those games, the Dolphins, week 7 through 12, these are their opponents. They played the Steelers at home. They were at the Lions in week 8. They were at the Bears week 9. They were home against the Browns week 10. They had a bye in week 11. And in week 12, they had the Texans. Those were the five games in week 7 through 12 during their opponents, right? This were two of his numbers. They won all five of those games. His completion percentage was 70. He had 11 touchdowns, zero interceptions. His passer rating was 119.7 against those five inferior opponents. Now, let's go to weeks 13 through 15, shall we? Week 13, they played the 49ers. Week 14, they played the Chargers. Week 15, they were in Buffalo. These were his numbers. They were 0-3 as a team. He completed 50% of his passes. Five touchdowns, two interceptions, passer rating 83.3. So what that tells me is Tua plays great against inferior competition, but against the elite teams in the NFL, he struggles. And if the Dolphins want to be a true contender in the AFC, Tua is going to have to play better against the upper echelon of the football teams in the NFL. That's what that tells me. With all that being said, it's time for my prediction. Man, this, 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 this game is going to be much closer than people anticipate. It's a Christmas matchup. I'm so excited for it. The Packers need this win to improve on their playoff chances. And real quick, before I get my prediction on the game, this is the, the route for the playoffs for the Packers to make the playoffs. They have to win out against the Dolphins, Vikings, and Lions. They need the Commanders to lose two out of their next three games. The Commanders have the 49ers, Browns, and Cowboys. They also need the Seahawks to lose one of their next three games. But the Seahawks play the Chiefs this week. That's a very likely chance the Seahawks will lose that game. So that's the route for the Packers. And what's so crazy is all of those scenarios could happen. The hardest part for the Packers is going to be winning out. All that being said, I ain't picking against Aaron Rodgers. I'm rolling with the Green Bay Packers to beat the Miami Dolphins in an upset in Miami and keep their playoff hopes alive. I'm going Packers 27, Dolphins. 24. It's going to be close, but I got Aaron Rodgers outlasting Tua Tagovailoa in Miami on Christmas.